There's nothing like being disconnected in a desert environment surrounded by awe-inspiring rock formations. It's a humbling and beautiful experience that gives you an appreciation for the power of nature. Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Ernest from TripAstute. In this video, we're exploring Arches National Park in Moab, Utah, and sharing our top hikes and tips for this scenic and unique destination. It's no secret that Fiona and I love national parks. In fact, visiting every single US national park is a bucket list item for us. We still have a ways to go, but we love the idea of visiting more of the US with the intention of exploring the national parks in the area. Arches National Park was one of the stops on our honeymoon road trip to six national parks. Arches is located in eastern Utah near the city of Moab, which is about 230 miles southeast of Salt Lake City. The park itself is about 120 square miles, which makes it a small to medium sized park. It's home to over 2000 natural sandstone arches, making it the highest density of natural arches in the world. That being said, you'll likely want to spend one or two full days exploring the park since there's a lot to see. Before we jump into the details, if you're new here, welcome to our channel. TripSue is a travel channel that is focused on sharing ways to make travel easier, affordable, and more enjoyable. Traveling can be stressful and expensive, so we're looking for ways to help you maximize your experience through travel tips, points of miles, and innovative gear. If that sounds interesting to you, please consider subscribing. When we first arrived at Arches National Park, I have to admit that it reminded me of Sedona, Arizona, especially with the red rocks and desert environment. However, it is a bit different. There are many more arches and the rock formations are unique. While Sedona is known for its large surrounding rocks, Arches has more detailed formations. As with other national park videos, I wanna share some of our favorite hikes and sites while visiting the park, as well as some tips in case you're planning a visit. I'll also include a difficulty rating for each hike so you can gauge whether it's something that you may wanna do. Here are some of our favorite landmarks and attractions in the park. Number one, Devil's Garden. This is in the northern section of the national park. What's great about the location is that there are about eight major arches in the area, the most notable being Landscape Arch and Double O Arch. The area offers multiple options for getting to these arches. You'll see signs for the normal hiking trails along with the primitive trails, which are trails that are more difficult and require some scrambling. The main trails are mostly sand and gravel, so keep in mind that it might be a slower hike. Overall, I would rate the hike to Landscape Arch to be easy, while the hikes to Double O Arch are much more difficult. To get to the Double O Arch, it's about a 4.5 mile round trip hike. The Landscape Arch is about 1.6 miles round trip, so it's much more realistic if you're limited in time. Number two, the window section. This is another area of the park with a concentration of arches. I recommend parking in the area and doing the short and easy half mile round trip hike to Double Arch, then doing the one mile loop through the Northern Window southern window, and turret arch. Overall, the trails in this area are flat and easy to navigate. Keep in mind that the first 100 yards of the one mile loop is paved, so if you're traveling with a wheelchair or stroller, this might be a good option. Also, you might recognize the double arch when you see it, since it was featured in an Indiana Jones movie. Number three, Fiery Furnace. The Fiery Furnace is a maze of narrow sandstone canyons and is a major attraction in the park. However, in order to explore the area, you either need to take a ranger guided hike or get a day use permit at the visitor center. The area is less than half a mile in diameter, but it does require time to explore. In order to get through certain areas, you need to scramble onto some rocks and squeeze through some narrow passageways. While I wouldn't say it's strenuous, these obstacles make it a challenging hike. The trail is marked too, but you can easily get lost or disoriented while inside. Since this is a permit or ranger led hike area, you want to book it several months in advance. We booked our tour about six months ahead of time and it sounded like others in our tour did the same. Also the parking lot for the Fiery Furnace is small so I recommend getting there early. I've included a link in the video description for the website where you can book tickets. Number four, Delicate Arch. This was our favorite hike in the park. The trailhead for this hike is in the western section of the park. To do the full three mile round trip hike, you'll start at Wolf Ranch Trailhead. The trail starts out flat, but then gets much more difficult as you scale the large rock face. This seems to be where a lot of people give up since it can be tiring. Though if you persevere, you'll continue onto a beautiful trail that takes you to the arch. I personally love this arch since it's not only a beautiful one, but the landscape around it is stunning. We did the hike in the late afternoon and the lighting was incredible. Since it does require a significant hike, you'll find it a bit less crowded than some of the other landmarks in the park. There is also a short detour on the trail to see petroglyphs. 
it's definitely worth checking out, especially if you're on your way back toward the trailhead. Additionally, if you're unable to hike it or looking for a more accessible view, there are two viewpoints available in the area. One is wheelchair accessible, while the other is a half mile round trip hike. There are obviously a lot more things to see when visiting the park. There are viewpoints all over that provide incredible views. However, these are the landmarks and hikes that we felt were most memorable and interesting. In terms of transportation, you'll need to drive to get to most landmarks and trailheads in the park. Some national parks have a shuttle or bus system, but in Arches, you'll need a vehicle to explore the park. On that note, while there are off-road trails in the park, we found them to be fairly rough. Also, to get to some of the more interesting trails, you'll need a 4x4 vehicle with a high clearance. We did see some Jeeps that were damaged from the trail, so I personally wouldn't attempt these off-road trails unless you are an experienced driver and have a specialized vehicle. And in case you're wondering, ATVs and UTVs are not allowed in the park. In terms of lodging, there are many choices in the city of Moab. Most of the major hotel chains have a presence in the area. Airbnb options are limited since Moab passed some legislation restricting its use in the city. We opted to stay at the Hyatt Place in Moab. In fact, when we booked it, we were able to get 3.5 cents per point on our redemption, which was an awesome deal. We transferred Chase Ultimate Reward points to Hyatt to complete the booking. The hotel is close to the park entrance and has an outdoor pool, laundry facility, and offers free breakfast. Though keep in mind that you have to book directly with Hyatt to get the free breakfast. You can't use third-party sites or travel portals like Expedia or Hotels.com. For dining, there are a lot of cool places in Moab. For lunch, we highly recommend the Sweet Cravings Bakery. They had a lot of interesting sandwich options and even offered a free sweet treat with every lunch purchase. For dinner, we recommend the LaSalle House. We actually went there twice during our trip since we loved it so much. The food and ambiance are great. Plus, we were able to make a reservation on Yelp, which made it very easy to book a table. Lastly, if you're planning a trip to Arches National Park, here are a few things to keep in mind. Number one, carry water and snacks. It probably goes without saying, but you'll want to pack a lot of water before visiting the park. Also, since the temperature in the desert is often very high, I recommend using insulated water bottles that can keep your water cold. We did notice a few water filling stations, but there weren't any places outside the visitor center where you could purchase water or snacks. We stopped at the city market in Moab to pick up water and snacks before heading into the park. We also noticed the prices here were much more reasonable than the tour stores, so we stocked up on a lot of supplies. Our approach was to eat a large breakfast every morning at the hotel, snack throughout the day, and treat ourselves to a nice dinner in the evening. Number two, pack sunglasses, hats, and sunscreen. With the exception of the fiery furnace, most of the trails and hikes in the park offer little to no shade. This means that you'll be getting a lot of sun exposure. You want to keep yourself protected and comfortable by wearing sunglasses and a hat and using sunscreen. Also, if you're wearing sunglasses with brown lenses, you may find it a bit disorienting. Like in Sedona, the soil is red. Since brown lenses can often add more contrast to your vision, it can make the environment glow red. If you have a pair of gray or more neutral colored lenses, I recommend using them instead. Number three, start early. Many of the popular attractions get flooded by tourist buses during the day. This was especially true of the window section of the park. You can beat the crowds and enjoy the cooler temperatures by starting earlier in the day. Number four, book a fiery furnace tour or permit early. As I mentioned earlier, the fiery furnace requires either a ranger-led tour or a day use permit. Both of these must be booked in advance. If you're planning a trip to Arches, then you'll wanna book this as soon as they are released since they limit the number of visitors per day and sell out quickly. Number five, wear appropriate attire. I saw a lot of people in the park who were wearing flip-flops on the trails. That's a really bad idea, especially when you're trying to scramble up rocks. It's easy to get scraped up or twist your ankle, so you'll want to wear footwear that is grippy and supportive like hiking shoes or boots. As an example, here's a breakdown of what we wore during our trip in September 2019. Along with hiking shoes and hats, we wore merino wool and sport fabrics. Merino wool is especially useful with its natural moisture wicking and odor resistant qualities. For more information, check out our video on merino wool clothing. Number six, consider nearby parks. There are several other national parks in the area. If you have the time, consider exploring Canyonlands National Park and Capitol Reef for easy day trips. We visited both as well, so we'll do videos of each park in the future. Number seven, consider an adventure tour. One of the highlights of our trip didn't involve the national park. We booked a canyoneering tour with a local company called Red River Adventures. It was an incredible experience exploring the sandstone canyons of Moab and even rappelling down some of the canyon walls. In case you're interested, we did the Rock of Ages canyoneering tour and highly recommend it. 
Our tour consisted of a four mile hike and three large rappels. Number eight, consider flying to Moab Airport. The city of Moab does have a small airport north of the city. United Express does fly in and out of the airport, so it's an option for those who don't want to fly to Salt Lake City and drive down. Though if you're on a budget, then it's probably going to be significantly less expensive to find a flight to Salt Lake City, rent a car, and drive three and a half hours down to Moab. Number nine, be careful of where you step. This is so important. Arches, as well as many of the national parks in the area, have biological soil crusts. These areas are very noticeable as they're often darker and sometimes even have white spots among the texture. The soil in the area is alive and is home to organisms like fungi, algae, and bacteria. The plants in the area are dependent on this soil crust and it takes generations for it to form. You don't want to step into it, so stay on the trails and watch out for any darker colors and textures on the ground. Another thing you want to watch out for are ephemeral pools. These can seem like potholes in the rock and can be either dry or filled with water. These pools are filled with organisms like shrimps. Even when dry, the organisms can become dormant until the next rainstorm. This means that you want to avoid stepping in these areas. Number 10, be aware of the weather. While the area is a desert, you want to be especially careful of lightning storms and rain. The area is prone to flash floods too, especially along the canyons. Also, sandstone can be slippery when wet, making it especially important to pack hiking shoes with a good grip. Number 11, leave no trace. Sadly, you'll see that many visitors have decided to leave their mark in the rocks. The national parks are a precious resource that should be preserved for future generations. This means not damaging or altering the environment, following safety precautions, avoid feeding any wildlife, and always disposing of any trash or waste. It probably goes without saying, but don't climb onto arches as well. It's not only dangerous, but it's also illegal. And finally, number 12, consider a national park annual pass. The admission fee for arches is $30 per vehicle and lasts for seven days. Though if you plan to visit more national parks, especially ones nearby, then you'll want to consider an annual pass for $80. It lasts for an entire year and can be shared with another person. It's also supporting a good cause and can be used to access other federal recreational lands. Have you been to Arches National Park? If so, do you have any other tips to share? Let us know in the comment section below. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, please give us a thumbs up and consider sharing the video with others. It really helps with growing our channel and community. Until next time, travel safe and travel smart.